Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. In this section of the lecture now you are learning about Sparkle subselects and property paths, two very powerful constructs within the Sparkle universe. As always we start with the simple questions. What Skyfire books were written by the 200 most influential authors? Seems to be quite simple, but it's tricky, I tell you, because we have to find out how do we determine who is an influential author. By closely inspecting what is inside Wikidata and what kind of properties we might use, we will see that there is a property which is called influenced by. And of course, by simply using that property and then aggregate it by, you know, counting simply how many people have been influenced by a specific person, we can use this information for our subsequent query. The only problem is we won't be able to exactly then also find out what books have been written by these exactly 200 most influential authors. So we have to compose our Sparkle query out of two Sparkle queries there. And this can be solved in a single Sparkle query using a so-called sub-Sparkle query. It's the same like in SQL, you probably also have heard sub-selects there when you are dealing with databases and this is exactly the same here what we are doing in the Sparkle universe with RDF data. Okay, so let's have first a look at the inner select. The inner select that you see here is enclosed here again by curly brackets and what you see here we have a single select, we select an influencer and we want of course here also then count all of the authors who have been influenced by that influencer. And what we have there is the usual stuff, so again author, occupation, writer has been influenced by an influencer and then of course <coughs> the influencer should be of course a writer because we are looking for writers and not other kind of influences we might have here. Next thing, this should be grouped of course then by influencer and as we count here the number of authors we find out here that have been influenced by that influencer, we will order it in a descending way by exactly this author count. And since we only want to talk about the 200 most influential influential authors, we limit this then by 200. This is the inner Sparkle subquery, which we then will deal further on in the outer query, because there we are simply taking up this influencer variable that we have, inf uh, that we have also created in the inner subselect. And then we say, okay, what are the notable works, that is book here exactly, that belong to science fiction? This is of course what we want to know. We want to know what Skyfire books were written by the 200 most influential authors. And then of course, yeah, we want to give this out in descending order by our order, author count and then see who are these authors or this, these influencers. Sounds complicated, is also complicated, is not so easy, so therefore we have prepared it for you and you can play around with it. And let's simply see what might be the result of this query. So, you see here, the most influential author we have here is Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, so that's the notable work of him. And here the author count is 20, so he has influenced 20, that's a lot. Then we have H.P. Lovecraft, he has more here uh, notable works, for example uh, the case of Charles Dexter Ward or the Mountains of Madness and he has influenced 17 further uh, authors. Uh, Comic McCarthy follows with 11, the same as H.G. Wells with 11, then we have George Orwell with 9, Stephen King, you might remember him as the most prolific of the science fiction authors, he only has influenced 9 further authors and so on. So this is quite interesting to see and of course this analysis goes then until the end and you will see these are not really 200, you only get 41 results here. Okay, so not so many influences that are there in the science fiction world that we are dealing with here in our examples. So that was a subquery. Besides Subqueries, you have further possibilities what to do there. 
Another thing I wanted to show you here is another visualization possibility. We could display the result that we had here also in terms of a graph. And of course in a graph you always have to connect entities here. And if we closely inspect our select line that we have, we have two types of entities there. We have the influencer and we have the book for example. And if I want to then create a graph that contains the influencers and their books and the connections between them, then you simply add here the default view graph. This is a feature of Wikidata. There you have the possibility to visualize also graphs for which we, you need, of course, these are kind of edges going from one entity to another entity. It would be influencer and book because all of the other things you see here are literals. And then I simply go to the query and I try it out. And you see then here is the network according so here is Stephen King and the nine books of Stephen mm -hmm. King and you can scroll around here for example you see Ray Bradbury and other people here in our graph that is displayed here. Okay so that was a simple visualization. What you could do then for an exercise is also to visualize the networks of influences between the authors. So simply think about how would I have to change that query that you have seen to get an influencer network out of that. So that will be one of the exercises you have to solve. Okay, so you see it here again and in the last section of this lecture we will talk about property paths, another powerful tool that you can use also to make more complex Sparkle queries. What are property paths? So if you think about a graph our RDF graph, you see here one entity connected to another entity via a property. And if you are following a path in the graph, you are following edge by edge by edge. And of course, then these edges are properties and this in the end becomes a property path. So a property path is a possible route through an RDF graph between two graph nodes. And in the trivial case, of course, the property path has a length one and then we have our standard triple pattern of graph pattern that we already know from the graph pattern matching of ordinary Sparkle queries. Okay, so let's see what type of property graphs we are dealing with. One thing that we can do are so-called alternatives. So I can give alternative labels here. In that graph pattern or property path you see here, I have used here uh, a vertical line and this simply is an OR which means we are following here a path which is either book 1 DC title display string or book 1 RDFS label display string. So this means this is an alternative. I either we are looking for a match for one of the possibilities or even both of the possibilities I'm giving here um, as alternatives. And of course I can use even more. I can use here a third one, a fourth one and so on. So this is alternatives. Another possibility is I can also give a sequence which means I use property paths of length greater than one. So how do I do that? So like you know in a file system when you give you know a path there then the sim single properties are simply here separated by a slash that you see here. And you have here fourth nose for example, slash fourth nose, slash fourth name. You would follow then property one, property two, property three. And you are looking for a pattern that has exactly this form. You have Alice and this is connected by a path that contains uh, of nose, fourth nose and fourth name and then comes a name. And you are ex uh, selecting exactly this one. So this would be a path sequence, a property path that can be selected in via Sparkle. And the last one would be an inverse property path which mean, simply means you are trying to reverse the direction and ask for a reverse triple. So how do I do that? Just imagine we would have here um, a simple graph pattern X and then you have both mailbox and then you have a mailbox address. And I can simply switch it around and say okay I put here the object first and then if I use the same property I would have to reverse it. And you reverse it by using that hat. If you have a property that is preceded by a hat this means 
the triple has to be read in the inverse order. So it's simply turned around. So this is what the hat here means and this is an inverse property path. So this means here I'm talking about the other direction, object, property, subject. You will see in the examples that this might become useful. So first example we have here, who else beside me knows people that I know? So who else besides me use people that I know? So let's see here we have X, which is connected via fourth nose to an arbitrary node. And of course this fourth nose then is followed by some other people who know exactly the same node. So I have here fourth nose followed by fourth nose in the other direction, which means these exactly are people Y1, Y2 and Y3 who know the same people that I know. And of course I don't want to have myself in the result, so therefore I filter usually that of course among the nodes in X there are not the same one that uh, delivered back in Y. So that would be an inverse path sequence. Let's look at another example, um, an arbitrary length match. We hadn't that. So we have a property and probably in a property path this property might repeat itself, but we might not know exactly the number of repetitions. In our concrete example here we had what are the names of all persons I know and those who they know and so on and so on and so on. So I want to spread out exactly that path at an infinite length. How I do that? So I simply create here a path of fourth nodes which follows one after the other and I simply denote this by a plus sign or a multiplication sign which means then fourth nodes here should occur at least once but ultimately up to an infinite time followed by fourth name and then comes the name. So then I would also here simply follow fourth nodes, fourth nodes, fourth nodes and this would then be the name that will be returned. Of course the others, the name of number one and here number two would also be returned because they all are included here by using that simple sign. If I also would have then or would like to have the name of myself then I would write here the multiplication sign then it's starting with zero repetition so it's optional and then of course all potential numbers that might occur here, fourth nose that I can follow and then I look simply for the name property that has then connected to all of the nodes that I reach via fourth nose pass. So that would be an arbitrary length match. There is another one, so for negated property path, so this is also an interesting example. Negation then is um, usually constructed, we know this already from Sparkle via an exclamation mark, and if we look at that example, I have X and that is here connected by RDF type or the other way around RDF type with the Y. And I simply say, yeah, we look at all type definitions, be it one way or the other way around. And of course, they should be excluded from my results. So I don't want to see any type definitions. And you can exclude it simply here by a negated property path that, that you do here. Might be useful in some situations but of course it's a complicated thing and you should exactly know what you are doing. Okay, I have an example for you. So we just encountered H.P. Lovecraft in one of our recent um, Sparkle select statements and now we want to know who else was influenced by the influencers of H.P. Lovecraft. And simply mimicking the uh, same uh, property path expression that we have used for fourth nose, we simply also include here in our Wikidata example. So we have here H.P. Lovecraft. And then we say, okay, um, yeah, this is again influenced by. And this is of course the other way around influenced by. And then I have influenced by influencers. So I want to, uh, to know who else was influenced by the influencers of H.P. Lovecraft. And this is exactly what I try to express here. And then let's see what will be the result of this query. Oh, and you see, among the influencers who had the same influences as H.P. Lovecraft are 
um, Edgar Allan Poe or another one, Arthur McCann, you might know him, Stephen King occurs again, Ray Bradbury, George R. R. Martin, you also should know probably that guy or might know that guy, and many other people who are contemporary authors or also historical authors who have the same influences as H.P. Lovecraft. So that is one of the interesting results you can achieve with the help of complex property parts. Okay, in the next lecture you will see that Sparkle is explicitly more than only a query language because we have further possibilities of things we can do and manipulate via Sparkle. So stay tuned for the next lecture.